Alright guys, what is up? Welcome back to Minecraft with Lone Debater 7. And today we're looking at my work in progress 9 input XOR gate. So as it's built right now, um, it does work like a normal OR gate. Uh, so if one input's turned on, this will light up. It's not quite an XOR gate yet because I haven't linked up all of the inputs together. Basically you have to go through every single iteration uh, of two switches, so like one and three, one and one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five, one and six, one and seven, one and eight, one and nine, and then do two and three, two and four, two and five, all the way on, right? So it's a shit ton of land uh, of AND gates rather, and trying to connect it all in, uh, I just haven't done it quite yet. I know I can, and I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's done. But as it stands right now. Basically, if all the inputs are on, this won't be on, but if, you know, any combination therein are turned on, it'll work. So, let, let me just show you what I mean. So, if I turn on that, the output lights up. Turn on that. It's still lit. It's not supposed to be. If I turn on this one, it should turn off because I've connected the AND gate, so, to control it. Anyway, uh, so, some of these it might turn off because I have them wired, but I still need to do the rest of the combinations. So it's still off, still off. And this will stay off because I've got that first AND gate. So like, let me just turn this one off so we can see the rest. So those are all going, this one's going, going. And that actually turned off because I have some of these links, like I said. But if we turn all of them on, um, this should turn still be turned off. So there we go, with all of them on, it's off. So let me just kind of explain how this works. So an XOR gate, the idea is only if one input is a one, will you have one on the output. So just in case you haven't watched our other episodes, um, we're saying the switch off is a zero, and we're saying the switch on is a one, as far as digital you know, binary logic is concerned. With an XOR gate, um, if any two inputs are one, the output should also be zero. Uh, so we have it built for some of the switches that that is the case, just not all of them yet. I need to go through and basically build an AND gate for every co possible combination of two switches and connect it in to this mamma jamma over here. So basically this is just a big OR gate um, that has the actual connection for the nine uh, input OR gate right here coming out. And then I've got AND gates underneath to kind of merge these switches all the way down. So I have it set. So if all the switches are on, this will turn off. I have it set if uh, eight, nine are on, it'll turn off. I have it set. So if seven, eight are on or seven or six seven are on this will turn off um i haven't connected these middle ones yet i don't believe and it realistically it's going to take a lot of redstone to actually make a functioning nine input xor gate just because um we need to to be able to turn off if any combination of two switches are on so that means even if it's one and nine that are on that output should be a zero um but yeah in order to do that I need to build an AND gate between input 1 and input 9 and have it feed into this gate right here in order to send a signal to this block, turn off this, and turn off the output. It's not difficult to do except for the fact that we've got so much redstone in here and they can't ever touch otherwise it breaks the circuit. <laughs> um, so it's either going to go really deep or really tall in the air in order to build this, but that's okay. I mean, having a nine input function in XOR gate would be amazing, but I just wanted to kind of show you the progress I've made thus far on it. We'll do another video once it's complete, just to show you all the inner workings. But basically the way this works, or at least how I build XOR gates, you need the basic OR gate all the way through for however many inputs we're doing nine. So we have a nine input OR gate on the top level here. Um, built out so it's very similar to the OR gate that we've got over here only there's nine inputs instead of you know two uh, anyway next what you have to do is connect 
all nine switches into a giant AND gate. So you need to build a nine input AND gate to control when all of the switches are active to turn that off. Uh, next, what you need to do is build an AND gate for each individual combination of switches. Uh, that way, if two, if ever two are turned on at the same time, regardless of number, it will still output a zero. Uh, so there's a lot of redstone that I still need to lay um, in order to make this, a, you know, fully functional XOR gate. Uh, but on the basic level, I mean, it works and, you know, it, it's just a matter of mapping out how I'm going to fit the rest of the gates um, because basically... I need to pull this line all the way over so it's connecting to that line in an AND gate and kind of, you know, go through all these and make it work. Um, once you do that, it's going to be pretty awesome because uh, then you'll have a functioning multi-input XOR gate um, and you can do it simpler. So like if I was to build a three input, I might actually be able to do that on camera for you just so you can see how it works. Basically, I'm just going to bring these up a little bit so we can pull the uh, um, inputs off for the AND gate, which I didn't do on that one. So you start out with your basic OR gate, and I'm just going to funnel the output back. Um, that way we can see it. So this is the output line. Those are the inputs, any one of these. So basic OR gate, right? Pretty easy. So now what we need to do is connect one and two in an AND gate, one and three in an AND gate, and two and three in an AND gate. So three AND gates. Um, and that's pretty simple as well. Basically what I am going to do is maybe, well, no, that won't work. Uh, we will have to elevate this one, I think. So we'll put one there, put one there, put one there. And I can bring, well, no, that won't work either. Um, shit, okay. Uh, so I can branch this one off like that. Um, I can't do it with this one because of the stupid output line. We're just gonna break that back a little bit. It's taking up our space. <laughs> um, but if we bring the second input off like that, uh, we can, I'm just gonna connect the end gate back here. And you can build, like I'm gonna show you a different way to build an end gate just for funsies. Uh, that I implemented, it kind of saves a tiny, well, it might save a bit of space, I don't actually know on that, but anyway, so now we've got that, that's our end gate, and I'm just going to funnel it back this way, oh, whoop, needed to go one over, uh, and we will need a repeater, because redstone only goes for 16 blocks, but basically what we're going to do with this is input it into um, well first we need to pass it through a not gate so we'll put that here cool and then this one just needs to input into this block here um, next what we're going to do is the AND gate between one and three or well that's actually what we built was one and three so we need to do one and two um, for this, I am actually going to just, we're going to put the lever like that, so I have a little bit more working space, um, yeah, it's, it gets messy really fast with redstone just due to the connection issues you have, uh, but anyway, so we've got number two coming off here, what I wanted, I, you know, it probably wasn't the smartest idea trying to do all this on sand, just because sand breaks, but that is okay whatever um, we're gonna just pass this underground so it doesn't connect cool so that is input two we've got input one over here so we will just bring him underground as well uh, actually and we're gonna raise that one up a single block it doesn't really matter like it doesn't matter the height as long as the lines don't connect, right? So that's the thing you need to worry about is the lines connecting. Um, but yeah, not a big deal. So we're gonna do, those actually need to be farther apart. Or well, they don't have to be. We'll just build the shitty version that I got. So we're gonna go this way and like that. 
and let's see, got to connect this one up, so, and you can run the output of your AND gate through the same line, so like this is an AND gate line here, we can run that, and it's totally fine, um, not a big deal, but just to be safe, um, I'm actually going to run it directly into the input, into that NOT gate up here, so do this, do that, and yeah, basically, I mean, we could, in theory, put it in right here as well, but I am going to connect it up like that. And so now I've got switch it, the first input tied to inputs two and three. Now I just need to connect um, two and three together, which shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, we're going to take the input number two from right here and... Actually, we're going to go there. Just trying to break enough blocks so I have room to do this. Um, Alright. I think it probably would have worked if I placed the block right there. And then just had the two torches next to each other. But you know what? We're going to be safe. Because I don't want it to be wrong and not work. And we're going to do it this way. So, oh, another cool trick, right? So... We've got those torches under there, so they will power the block above. So this is actually the AND gate output right here. And just throw down a repeater. Um, this needs to go up a level. So we won't throw down the repeater yet, JK. Um, we'll just bring it up another. And we'll throw the repeater there because it's starting to get dim. Let me just move up the time so you guys can see what we're doing. Um, there we go. And we're going to go like this. We'll bring it down right here. And funnel in this last one through a knot gate. We'll just put it here. That way it's, you know, semi-symmetrical, right? Uh, and then this guy will run up like so and put it in like that. And that should be our completed XOR gate. Um, this is the output. Let me... Let me bring this over, I think. Just so we can see it a little bit better. I mean, I honestly don't really care, but I know that um, it's not always the easiest to see the output uh, when it's on the tail end, so I just want to kind of help you guys out with that. Um, what we're going to do, just so it doesn't connect up, is this little trick right here. And now we should be able to take our output right over this bridge. We'll throw down a repeater just to make sure it has enough. I don't think this is more than 16 blocks, but... Better safe than sorry, I always say. Um, and yeah, so we can see our output there. And this should be a functioning three input XOR gate. So we turn on one, the output is on. Turn on two, output is on. Turn on three, the output is on. Now, let's test out the exclusive functionality. So we've got switches one and two turned on. That is still firing which is not meant to happen. Um, so we must have messed up the AND gate. Um, those are all connected properly. Okay, so one is outputting there. And, oh, okay, I see what happened. We broke that. Okay, so there's that. So I do actually need to bring this in. A little bit earlier. Not too much of a problem. That needs to be connected. Uh, actually, this might be a problem. Because of this. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> um, this is why, like, it, it does take a little while to build these circuits, I will say. Um, so just bear that in mind. Like, don't expect it to work the first time because it probably won't. Um, but I think that fixed the issue. 
the output off. Uh, where is the output? Over here. No, it's still not turned off. Why not? That is going... Oh, it doesn't have enough power. Well, that that might be a problem, right? <laughs> um, here. Throw down a repeater. There we go. Now it's got enough juice to turn off the output. Okay, so that's one and two. Let's try out one and three. Same. It's probably a power issue here as well, is my guess. So that... Looks like it just needs a little boost, so we'll throw down another repeater, and that didn't turn it off, so it's probably an issue over here. Okay, so that is off, but it shouldn't be. What's happening? Um, is it input one that's having the issue? Kind of what it looks like. Um, uh, okay, that's these are really this is really close to the nine input one. I'm sorry, so it gets a little bit confusing where shit's at. Um, did I just not? No, because those are the torches underneath. So it looks like that one is still firing, but that is from input two, not input one. Did we not connect input one? I thought we did. Uh, so input one comes off, goes down, goes down again into this one. Did I branch it another direction? So that one's turned off, but this one isn't. Oh, okay, I see what I did here. Um, basically what happened is this is not going directly into the block so we're gonna move this over just a smidgen and that should fix our problem so if we change how the redstone's connected like that now our outputs off when one and three are firing and then just to test the last combination two and three it also works so we'll cycle through one more time just to show you this is a functioning three input xor gate so input one is a one our output is a 1. Input 2 is a 1. Our output's a 1. Input 3 is 1. Our output's a 1. Now, inputs 3 and 2 are a 1. Our output's a 0. Inputs 1, 2, and 3 are a 1. Output 0. Inputs 1 and 2 are, are a 1. Outputs a 0. And inputs 1 and 3 are a 1. Outputs a 0. So there you have it, guys. That is how you build a three input XOR gate. As you can see, it is a little challenging. Basically, you have your basic three input OR gate on the front, and then you have to have three for this configuration. You, have, you need four AND gates, so one for each combination of switches. So one and two, one and three, and three and two. Actually, that's, o that's only three. I'm sorry. So you only need three AND gates to make this one work, so it's a little bit easier um, than the nine input over here where you need a, just an absolute shit ton because it scales. Uh, with each input you add, you need more gates. Like if I was to add a fourth input, for example, that would increase the number of gates we need by one, two, three. So we'd need another three AND gates just adding this one input so it gets more significant the more you add but there you have it that's how you can build a three input xor gate and a brief look at our work in progress nine input xor gate probably not like i don't know if i actually want to take the time to finish this just because it's yeah it's going to take fucking forever but uh if you enjoyed the content today be sure to like comment subscribe as always and until next time this has been lone debater 7 and we will see ya